Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us once again on Deeper, your daily Bible study. It is a blessing to come once again to the study of God's Word. We ask that you will continue to keep us in our prayers as we want to share the riches of God's Word with you each day. Uh, my name is David Salazar and with me is Dr. Tim Ramsey. And once again, we will start with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and the opportunity that you give us to be able to study once again your word, to have the freedom to be able to spend time in it and be able to share from your word to others. I ask that you will grant us the Holy Spirit that may teach us and lead us to all truth. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, Thursday, May 23rd, we have the title, Fighting for Your Prodigal Child. And so we're going to start with a verse uh, in Proverbs 22, 6. But before I read that verse, this uh, title, Prodigal Child, it's something that in almost every family we see. Right. Sadly, um, very few families have older children um, you know, work, working together or being close to the parents and to the God. Uh, I think that most families, we have a child that is, that we hope is a prodigal child, that we hope that will come back to the Lord. So we'll just start with this verse in Proverbs 22, 6, that see what it says. And uh, maybe I'll ask him to tell us what his thoughts are. <laughs> Let's read. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So, Tim, the question of the lesson was, uh, it is a guarantee, a promise, or a probability? What are your thoughts on yeah. this? Well, I wish I could say this is a, a black and white promise, that uh, if you have uh, trained your child in the way they should go, and they... Uh, drift from that at some point that they will come back. Obviously, that's not a promise because there's lots of sad examples where it doesn't happen. Um, you know, God himself was the perfect parent, and yet he lost a third of the angels in heaven. Um, and so how do we understand this verse here? When he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, I believe there is a promise here. And the promise is this, that if we as parents prayerfully uh, do our best to raise our children to love and serve God, and at some point they choose to go a different direction, uh, there is this promise that there is something in them, that there's, there's a hook, so to say, so right. to speak, that God has in them that gives uh, him every advantage possible to bring them back. You know, God can and he does uh, work in people's lives no matter what their background is, and we hear these wonderful conversion stories of people that never knew God and never heard the name of Jesus, and then they do, and they're, they're converted. Praise God that that happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's much more likely, right. there's much greater probability that uh, a person will come back to something that they had been taught as a child. And so there is a promise there that... No matter what choice the child makes, because it does come down to, down to that, doesn't it? Right. They're human beings. They're not robots. We don't program them like a computer uh, to act and behave a certain way through their whole life. They're human beings with free will. And if they choose to go a different direction, we still have this promise that if we have planted within them a love for God when they are young, God has a handhold that he can use to his best advantage to bring them back. Amen. I mean, that's really the promise that God is giving us. I believe you're, you're absolutely right. The freedom of choice is something that even God cannot force. I mean, he cannot force upon anyone the, his will. He will always respect our decision and he gives us the freedom of choice. It is important that we keep as parents that in mind as we ourselves know, we have made many choices, maybe sometimes wrong and some of them have been okay. But overall, we have that freedom of choice. We have the freedom today to listen to God's word or reject him. We have the freedom of doing that. And so our children, if they are, if we have a child that has lost its way or has left 
the, the, the church or the knowledge of God or, or the family, it is important that we also learn to do our part in giving the opportunities for the child to come back to us or come back to the Lord. And I think that that's why we're going to really briefly look at the story in Luke chapter 15. And I'll ask Tim to start reading from verse 11, uh, verse 11, the story of the prodigal son that I know many of us know, but certainly we'll try yeah. to apply <clears throat> in the concept of parents and children. Very well-known parable. Just interrupt me when you uh, want to stop here. No <clears throat> and Jesus said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Amen. What a beautiful story. And I know that many of us can almost uh, feel that, that beautiful experience of having the child come back to us. Now, I would like to analyze a little bit because we want to fight for that prodigal child. We want to be able to have that experience where a child comes. Let's analyze briefly as we have read the story. What was the attitude of the father? The child, as we see in the story, uh, comes of age, uh, maybe he's a, a you know a, a early or young adult, and he decides he wants nothing to do with his father. He decides he wants to have his inheritance, and he asks something that the parent, I mean, he cannot write. You know, the inheritance you receive when your parents are dead. But this young man was determined to go another way. And he pretty much told your parents, if you think about that, you know, I might not ever see you again. I, I'm going somewhere else, and I please give me what's mine. He asked something that parents would only give when he were dead, but the, the father agrees. And he's really saying, Dad, I would rather have you dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really, I mean, I want your money. I don't care about the relationship with you. That's exactly right. So now, you know, are we to necessarily give them our, our children? Well, you know, that's something that sometimes parents make in mistakes. I, uh, there is a counsel even on that. But the story is the parent could not hold the child, would not force the child to love him or to stay in his house or to, you know, just do what he wanted he allowed him, he gave him what he wanted and left. And that's kind of a, a lesson for us because sometimes some parents maybe are trying when they're teenagers, they're trying to force their children to obey in such a way. And maybe they have already failed at the beginning in the early part. And in, in, the, in, the, in the teenager years or the, where they become young adults, it's really a parent has to learn to change its approach to the child. It's a time where they have to learn to gain them or, or win them with love, not with permissiveness to allow them to do whatever they want. Because you know in the story, the child did not do that behavior at home. There was rules, there were sets, and the father will not allow the child to violate his house. That's why he wanted to leave. That's why. <laughs> but at the same time, in love, he was trying to deal with the child in love. And I believe this is a lesson we have to learn. You know, we have to be able to know that it is a time where we have to win them over with love and affection and, 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 and trying to gain them to fall in love with you and with Christ. But let's try to move on as long as, as we have uh, the time running, we have to continue. Um, this is the thing. He leaves. 
he goes and he spends all that money living a very sinful life. Um, what happens? What is the attitude of the father while this is happening, while the f- child is gone? Is the, ch- is the father going after the child, seeking, you know, where in every city he has been, going after him? Is, is that the attitude of, of the father? And I think that this is a, a lesson. I'm not trying to say that we're not to care for them. But oftentimes, and I tell you from my own experience, because I don't want to bring somebody's experience but my own, you know, my, my grandmother, um, she, um, the, father of my, the mother of my father, she was, she, always had, she was a very wealthy lady and very smart with her money. And her s- children um, were grown, but they did not have well ethical behaviors, and, and including my, my own father many times. And uh, they will waste money, and she will always be there willing to lend her and give them. Sadly, um, you know, that behavior, that aspect did not help them at all to my uncles and aunts and, and, and even my own father, like I said, you know, this concept that they could go to the mother and, and just get whatever. I, I feel that that would not help them to develop true sense of responsibility. And so it is important that we see in this lesson that as you are the father of a prodigal child, you are to keep yourself available for them, but there has to be a change, a, a real repentance in that child before you're willing to train or, 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 or give yourself, and you should be willing to do everything for them, but you have to wait or wait in the Lord and pray for them. And if you can talk to them, admonish them to come always to the Lord, to come home. But in a sense, expect for the, or wait for them till they repent before you give them back the the blessings of being, you know, that that receive that that support, that financial aid, whatever it is that they may need. There has to be a repentance. And God does the same thing with us, right? You know, when we choose to go a different path from Him, He allows us to, right? Uh, and He He's at work in our lives, praise God, to bring us back. But He's not as you're saying, chasing and forcing us, uh, or uh, he does what is in our best. And many times that best is to wait until we are prepared to come back to him. I've seen many, many examples where, um, and it's more these examples, that's why it makes me say what I'm saying, that I see many examples where parents who have children who have been, who have left the faith or are really in some vice or some sort of, issues of that nature where they're really living a sinful life. So many parents, they are ready to welcome their behavior in their own home, welcome their behavior and not allowing them to really be come to the point of, of, of conversion, of repentance. And that's really when you're not really helping them. They're not coming to the point where they can return to you. So we ask, you know, and I believe that this is why it's so important in this lesson, that there has to be that love, that mercy, that desire, that longing that the Father must continue to have, never to lose hope. But yet, at the same time, pray that the Lord uses the circumstances around him, that it will bring conviction. As in this case, it brought to his memory the fact that in his home, there was food. In his home, there was a different experience. And he was willing to come with a converted heart in humility to submit himself to whatever rule, whatever thing was in the home. And uh, that is why I believe this lesson of the prodigal son and the prodigal child, really it's a lesson about us seeking the Lord. What are we to do while our children are away? What is my responsibility? How the Lord wants me to react or act in this circumstance? As the Lord, a lot of wisdom and, and, and guidance in this aspect so that you may not hinder the process of that young man or that young woman from repentance. That is, I guess, the main, main, main point of this concept, and God will bring them back. Well, this is it for today. We thank you for your blessings and for allowing us to be in your home. May God bless you. We will talk to you tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.